everyone. Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art. <laughs> Bless you! In today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to paint this abstract whale. And this is great for beginners. This is a great paint if you're a little stressed out and need to just loosen up. It'll take you about an hour to paint, if not less. And I have all the materials and everything you need in the description box below. Now, if you struggle with anything like anxiety, depression, or addiction, or maybe you know somebody who does, like I used to, I've created this affordable online animal art masterclass designed for creatives of all artist levels, beginner through advanced, and I show students how to paint pets and wildlife, all while teaching them how to reduce stress in a very creative way. So guys, if that's something you'd be interested in, I have all the links in the description box below. I've even just recently added a wolf tutorial. I'm offering, offering traceables for people who struggle with drawing. So guys, check that out. And without further ado, guys, let's get painting this whale. <laughs> So first what you're going to do is prep your canvas with a thin coat of ocean green and you want this to cover all the sides and the surface of the canvas and then let that dry and then we'll move on to the next step. Once your canvas is dry, we're going to take titanium white with, and forgive me, I always have trouble pronouncing this. It's phallocyanine. <laughs> when you combine a little bit of titanium titanium white with that blue we're gonna start from the bottom up with our large flat brush and we're just gonna work our way from bottom up and as we progress towards the top we're going to add in more white so just a little bit more white in the middle and then a lot more white towards the top now remember this is a very abstract loose painting so use this step just to loosen up your wrist, to loosen up your mind, and to allow yourself to just be completely free of perfectionism. It's just, you can see that my strokes are not, they're just really slapdash. I'm allowing just the paint just to do what it wants. And so don't, don't think too much into this. Don't try to make it perfectly even, blended. Just allow the color to mix on your canvas and let it happen as it comes. Now I, um, you can see that I'm putting the paint on pretty thick, so thick that I'm dropping it uh, all over. So um, depending on how much texture you want, just that just depends on how much water you're adding. So for me, I added a lot of paint and a lot of texture. I love that. And, but you can smooth it out a little bit more um, and add some more water if you'd like. Guys, don't forget to paint the sides. That is still part of the painting. And try your best to kind of do that progression from dark to light. And um, yeah, so make sure you do that while it's wet so you don't have to remix paint to do that later. Once your canvas is all dried, we're going to make one of my favorite colors, which is like a pinkish or purplish. And so I'm just taking violet with a good amount of titanium white and just a little bit of permanent red. And once you've created that like purplish pinkish color, we're just going to wisp it over 
letting that blue pop, letting that blue shine through from the bottom. So I'm not covering the whole thing. I'm just kind of wisping it back and forth from the top to down to about midway. And then once I am happy with that, I am just going to apply the drip technique, which I really, really like this. And what this is, is just I'm, first I'll dip my brush in some of the paint and then I'll dip my brush in the water and then I'll just place my brush where I want that drip to fall. As you can see, I'm just smoothing out that section where I, I place that paint after I place it down for that to make that drip. This is so much fun because you're kind of watching what the water does. You have no idea where it would go. I mean, it's going to go down, but sometimes it might catch the texture of the paint underneath and then it might just go a different direction. So have fun with this. Let the water just take take over and apply as many drips or as little drips as you would like. I just want to reiterate what I had said before. I, after I make the drip, I smooth out that area because I want those drips to be there, but I don't want the little dots of light blue to come through. That That's up to you if you want that, but I kind of wanted to smooth that out a little bit so that the, just to make the purple just more rich and stand out and then have those drips there with the blue. I had you guys do that wispy back and forth movement with your brush because I wanted to have gaps open so that we could do this, exactly this. We could have more drips coming over that light blue and then pouring straight into the purple and then into the dark blue. And that just gives it so much character. I just really like how that just overlaps. Okay, so once your canvas is all dry, we're gonna go on to drawing the whale with our paint. Now, if you don't feel comfortable with this, that's fine. You can use a marker or you can use a pe pencil as long as your canvas is dry. It is a little bit easier to see when you're using paint. And so I just give you hope that I can inspire you to draw and just not be afraid to make mistakes because you'll see later on that I don't draw this perfectly right off the bat and I have to make a lot of adjustments as I go. And so if you just follow me with my detail brush, I am just painting a very abstract shape of a whale. I'm starting with the body first. And then I go into making that curvy fin. I'm making both curvy fins. Now I have a reference photo on for all my tutorials and they're always gonna be in the description box below. And there's a link and this one will just say whale reference photo. So click that and if you wanna print it off, then before painting this, go right ahead. I just made that eye and I, I, I'm actually gonna tell you not to do that because I made that eye probably three times in this tutorial and finally the third time I was happy with the placement of it. So ignore that eye guys, don't paint that yet. You're gonna find that later on I place it in the right spot. It is too high up and see, I'm actually redrawing the top of the whale's uh, nose mouth area. And now I'm gonna have you fill in the body of the whale with this dark gray. You can use a larger brush. I chose to use this smaller brush, but 
Save yourself some time and you can use a larger brush. If you created that eye, I'm gonna have you paint right over it. And I'm also adding a little bit more titanium white to my paint. I wanna create this part of the whale a little bit lighter. And so you can even just mix that straight on the canvas. Again, this is gonna be real loose, real abstract. We're not making this a perfectly even variant in color. We're just gonna allow the paint to do its thing. All right, so the things to know about the fins is we're gonna leave a, about like a half inch gap between the top of the fin and where we're painting because we're gonna make that white. And then we want the color of the fins on the bottom to be darker. So we're obviously gonna add just a little bit of white so that we create this dark gray for the bottom part of the fin. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the belly and the fins. And I just mixed white with a little bit of black so that I make a really light gray. And we're just gonna paint the entire belly that color and then the place where we left those gaps on the fins. And we're gonna paint right over our sketch as we're doing this. So we, at this point, we should almost not see any sketch marks that is, there's just a few in the fins, but we're gonna be painting over those with our white. Now on this fin, I decided that I wanted to elongate it. It is just a little too short in proportion to its body. So make sure you extend that white out a little bit more.
Next, I go in with my dark gray and I add more contrast and definition to the whale. And I do that on and off throughout this tutorial. And so make sure you make enough of that color. With my dark gray, I use the edge of my small flat brush and I create a wavy line on the top of the fin. I do the same thing with the edge of my brush for the belly, except I make it a bit more long and curvy. Make the lines equidistance apart, and I would say do about a fourth an inch for each little section, if not less. Okay, so you want to wash out your brush so you don't have any more black on it. And I'm mixing violet. I mixed violet with titanium white to create a dark purple so you don't need a whole lot of white. And I'm just putting that in random spots on the body of the whale. Now, if you missed this part uh, in the very beginning of the tutorial, I made a few mistakes on the eye. I tried three attempts in this tutorial to get it right. So right now I have an eye. And but later on, I'm going to put it in the correct place so you can either go with your gut and make your own eye for the whale, or you can wait until a little bit later. All right, with our phalo cyanin, if I got that right, blue, we're going to mix that with a little bit of white to create a darkish blue. And like the purple, we're going to sporadically put that around the body and the fins of the whale. With a small round brush, we're going to just with direct straight titanium white, we're going to fill in that white part of the fin. So you just want to do it the space in between that wavy line that we made and the dark, uh, the dark gray that we made at the very beginning. So just use that to fill it in, try and keep those dark lines and do that on both fins. Next, we're going to be painting the underbelly with this brush and with titanium white 
doing the same thing we did with the fins and this is a bit higher up so if you need to hold your arm to have a steady hand to go in between those wavy lines then so be it it uh you definitely want to do this slowly so that you don't have to go back in the black obviously it's not the end of the world if you do but just can make things a little bit quicker You'll notice that I actually added in another white line. I just thought that that gap between the forehead and the belly was just too wide, so I added another line. You're welcome to do the same thing too, or if you feel like that space was just too is too small already, then then don't. Now I'm using Mars Black to add more contrast, to polish up some of the mistakes that I had done, and to add more shadow. So I apply this underneath the fins, I apply this on the lower belly, I apply this on the back. Once you've completed the dark contrast that we just did, you want to let your canvas dry completely before moving on to the next step. And this step we're just using our fan brush. This is a wide brush, it looks like a fan. <laughs> I am just dipping my brush into titanium white. I have a little bit of water on my brush as well. And I'm using this brush to just go back and forth very lightly over the back of the whale. And you can see there's no, no direction I'm going. I'm, I'm really just doing this very sporadically back and forth. I'm doing it all over the lower part of the whale. Some areas are have more paint, other areas have less. And I like to use the texture on the brush, that wide texture just to create almost like water as if the whale is moving. I'm trying to create that movement in the water. Thank you. 
After that, I add a lot more water to my brush with still with titanium white on my fan brush and I just splatter paint on the canvas. I'm just knocking it on my hand, splattering. This is quite a messy process, so hopefully you have nothing like your cell phone or computer right next to your canvas or candle. <laughs> where I finally find the right placement of the eye and we're just going to make a small white oval. I'm using my detail brush with titanium white and it's going to be a, a roughly one inch from the top of the the end of the fin. If you didn't already notice I left a tiny little pupil shaped circle in the middle of the eye so we're just going to paint that in with straight Mars black later. Next, you're going to take straight portrait pink and apply it to parts of the belly and tops of the fins. I'm using dark gray to sporadically put that around the whale. next color we're going to mix is a dark purple and this has a little bit of Mars black in it, portrait pink, and violet. 
And again, I just kind of did this randomly around the whale. forgot this part of the belly needs to be portrait pink. Now I am just finally going to add that pupil to the eye. Guys, we finally have our whale eye after so many attempts. I It's just proof that a, any sort of painting you make, there can be lots of mistakes, there can be lots of redos but you'll eventually get there if you persist. And I certainly feel like I persisted on. And again, one last time, I am just taking my detail brush and some Mars Black and just defining lines and shapes and sections that I just really want to stand out. Next, you want to wash your brush out pretty thoroughly because we're going to go in with our straight titanium white. And this was an attempt to make barnacles. It didn't work out as well as I had hoped. And but I still left some of the barnacles that I made. So we're just going to go and make random dots, random blobs of paint all over the whale's body to represent the barnacles. I also accentuated some of the lines for the belly. I wanted to extend that out closer to the eye, so I also made some lines and I added a few more dots than I wanted to, so you'll see later that I got rid of some of these. But this is just where you can explore, just allow yourself to have fun with this and if there's anything you want to fix later, we can always do that like I did. I just took black and I just made that eye a little bit smaller. I felt like it was looking a little too big, so I just took the bottom line up a little. You're welcome to bypass this step if you feel like your eye is just right. Taking a break from the whale for now, I just went back to making that purplish pinkish color that we made previously, except it's a little bit lighter, just added a bit more titanium white to it. And I'm painting that at the top of the canvas. I don't go down too far because I still want to have some of that blue shine through. And I just wanted this a lot lighter and more vibrant up top. So I'm just making some parts are a bit darker, some parts are a bit lighter, as I just kind of wisp it back and forth again on the canvas. Now you really want to make enough of this color because we're going to add, we're going to do the drip technique with this color in just a little bit. I 
wash up my brush next after I'm done with the background here. And then I go in with my dark gray and I just touch up some of those barnacles, the ones that I wanna get rid of, I get rid of. And this is a step that you can bypass if you're happy with the barnacles that you applied. I just make some adjustments and then we go back with this color and we apply the drip technique. So just bear with me as I do this redo. So as we touch up our whale, doing things like adding more dark purple or more black, adding less, I'm sorry, adding more barnacles, what have you, I have to tell you that the song I chose for this section is called Sitting by the Shore. And I just think it's so cute and it reminds me so much of being by the water and just totally perfect for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoy this song. I think the greatest thing about painting animals is that as you're painting you can kind of picture yourself in their environment i right now i'm going through this ocean animal obsession where i feel like i'm snorkeling in the bahamas or somewhere tropical and so that's where i'm i've been painting so many fish and so many turtles and now whales and if you can just picture yourself anytime you're painting in that animal's environment just experiencing it just being present in that moment makes the experience so much more fun and enjoyable you kind of feel like you're a kid again and so that's something that really helps me to reduce stress and now we're back on that purplish pink color again except i added some more white and i'm just wisping that towards the top where the sun is hitting and then I'm going to add more wa water to my brush and then place it where I want those water droplets to drop. And that is our drip technique that we're going to apply in just a minute using this white purplish color.
One last time, we're gonna add this splatter technique where we take our fan brush with some white paint and water and we just tap our hand, letting that water just splatter all over the painting. Next, I'm just taking a dry brush and some titanium white and very little paint, by the way, and I'm just wisping that towards the top so that I really make that top bright. And for our last and final step, guys, I thought we would be done with our drip technique, but we have one more uh, attempt at this. It's with our phalo cyanin blue, I said it right, and some, and then applying that to the purple part, letting that drip over the whale and the bottom layers, and just adding dabs of paint too in random areas. So we're just adding that final touch, allowing the water to do its trick, adding in some more blobs of paint where we'd like, and that completes our whale. So that about wraps it up guys. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next animal painting tutorial for Stress Relief. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure you comment below and especially like this video if it helped you and subscribe if you already haven't and you would like to receive some more animal painting tutorials. Now guys, have a wonderful day. Bye.